Hi guys, welcome back to another episode of the podcast. Uh, this week I'm going to start what I can only imagine to be like a 10 part series because I'm going to talk about how I feel about being a woman. What got me thinking about this in the first place is like a year or two, oh my god, two and a half, fuck me, two and a half years ago, I was seeing this non-binary person and they were the first and honestly only non-binary person that I've ever been like involved with in that way. Um, also Bugs is next to me, sorry if you can hear her like fucking around. Um... They were the first and only non-binary person that I've been, like, at least sexually involved with. Honestly, I was not romantically involved with them. God bless. Um, not God bless, but, like, we had a brilliant arrangement. Anyway, the point was, when I was seeing them, I started to kind of think for the first time. I just never thought about it before. Like, why do I identify with being a girl? Because I've never felt uncomfortable in, like any aspect of, like, my gender or whatever. So I was, it, like, prompted me to think about it for the first time ever. And then I basically was struggling because I was like, there's really no distinction. Like, when you take away social norms, what is the difference between being a boy or a girl? Obviously, like, everyone's going to be like, well, physically, they're very different. I get that. But I feel like that actually should take a back seat when, in my own thoughts when I think about it. Because I'm not in tune with my body. The most I pay attention to my body is my period cycles. That is it. I feel like no one treats their body anymore like the animal, living, breathing organism that it is. We treat them more like disposable vehicles. Do you know what I mean? So it's like, we bring in like, oh, but we're physically different when we talk about general time. Like, yeah, but like, are we even aware of that? Like, I, I feel like, I don't know, for me anyway, that physical difference was more irrelevant. I was like, but why do I feel so strongly attached to like being a girl? Because like, I know I'm a girl, but like, what even is a girl? Other than like, I have a vagina. That can't be it. Like, that can't be the only thing that makes me identify with being a girl. And then I realised, like, a huge part of my, like, ties, like, feeling so strongly identifiable with, like, the term girl or woman, was, like, laid in the foundations of my experience with, like, womanhood. Which is, I feel, innately very different to being feminine. I feel like womanhood and femininity are two things that naturally have nothing to do with each other, right? We've made it that way. Humans have made it that way. Women, feminine people experience womanhood, but womanhood has nothing to do with with femininity, like, naturally. It's, it's a human, it's a man-made experience. So I was like, if I'm identifying with being a, a, a girl feminine through my womanhood then that doesn't even mean anything because it's not even fucking real but the world we live in I will never be able to untie those two things from each other those two things are permanently intertwined it, no matter how much thinking I do which I try not to do too much because honestly I'm tired I do too much of it but like you can't you can't unintertwine them maybe some people are further down that road but a lot of times as an adult, I feel like when I feel feminine is is moments that I feel beautiful, which is fucking weird. Like, that's so obscure because those things, I mean, they really don't have much to do with each other. Like, any, you can be a girl if you're ugly. You know what I mean? So why am I feeling more like one when I look hot? Because of men. Fucking nasty creatures. I'm going to talk about feminism, actually. It sounds really bad, but I didn't come across feminism until my early 20s. Like, I knew what feminism was, but I really didn't think about it until my 20th year of life. Like, it was just something that I just didn't didn't really seem to concern me. And then it, it was in my second year of university, my friend passed me on this book on feminism, and I literally devoured that shit. Like, I ate it up. I was going through something really, really bad at the time. I had been... I'd got out of a relationship. I've talked about this relationship so much on literally all of my social media but I devoured this book on feminism and after I read it I became kind of intense I'll be honest like what most people would describe as as intense I would say that 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 would be a fair word for me um and to be honest I was probably pretty t like hard to be around at that time actually um I was uh, making a point of being insufferable because this book had kind of empowered me for the first time in my life to to take up that space and to be annoying and to be extremely loud and to be um to really just like force my point all the time and 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 there's nothing wrong with that um 
But a lot of what I said at, during that time, like it was in my early learning stages, wasn't right. It was well intended, it just wasn't right. And I'm lucky that I had some pretty tolerable people around me at the time. Um, because I probably was hard to be around. Like I was learning so much and being so like filled with the power to finally like say it. And yeah, um, it was a huge learning curve. It was also the year that I realized how shit my male friends were. Like terrible fucking people right so i have two long-term guy friends um they might be two of the best people i know in fact they are two of the best people i know above literally anyone else in my life they have to be the most loving presences presences is that a word two of the most loving presences that i have ever come across i adore these people they are literally precious to me and honestly like I hated university. I was horrible on my mental health. I am still recovering from the burnout that I got after my fourth year. I would I would put myself through it again if it like I wouldn't take it back that whole experience because that's how I met these people. Like that is how precious they are to me. I I can't describe the two guy friends that I treasure and I have like five friends in total, mind you. So like two out of five, right? A, a guy at the same time that I was becoming friends with them, it was university, so I had a bunch of shit friends. Like, I feel like a lot of people at university, they're just friends with, like, random people. Because you go, and I think there's this fear of being alone, and so you kind of, like, take what comes. And I, that was definitely my position. Like, I was like, oh my god, how's everyone making friends? But I had a group of friends from day one, and so I just stuck by them because I was like... I honestly don't know if I'm going to make other friends because I didn't do like a bunch of sport or like a bunch of activities. I was just a lecture kind of girl, lecture in my bed. So I really clung to this group of friends that I had made basically in the group, you know, the little like accommodation group chat before uni. Then we were friends all through uni. Like me and this group, we stuck the fuck together. Obviously we had other friends along the way, but it was like this group. They weren't good people. Like they were like some of them were good. It was it was like a relatively big group and some of them I still know. Um others I do not. So this was kind of when I started to realize and what I became aware of with this group of friends was that I knew that I was the girl in the group, right? And because I was the girl in the group, I meant less. I had less like social standing than the other guys in the group everything I did or said was through the guise of she's also a girl like that was just like something that tagged along behind me and I was violently aware of it anytime I was in a room with them anytime I made a joke anytime we got drunk anytime I did anything and I'm not just saying this like assuming it because uh, I don't want anyone to be like I don't know I don't know I get scared talking about this kind of stuff. also realize that a lot of my presence in that group or actually, no, I'm not even going to go light on them. All of my presence in that group relied on my looks. That is like, my character is not why I'm here. And also, if I was to sit here and show the full extent of my character, I also wouldn't be here. Like, I have to sit pretty and quiet. Honestly, it got me angry for the first time. The first time I read any feminist, feminist literature, I became angry. Because the, the voice is kind of affirmed what I'd always been feeling, put words to it, and then gave me power to power to be like, fuck that, that's not that's not right. And I'd always been like acutely aware of how my male peers viewed me, or even like my first job when I was 16, I worked at a pub. Um, and you can imagine the kind of shit that like the male customer, I mean, a pub is an environment for no 16 year old girl, but you can imagine. And that was kind of my first intro to like men because I grew up with a single mother and I never had boyfriends. Um, I had guy friends, not boyfriends, but like guy friends. Um, but like my first intro to like men being in a group and having power over me, a waitress, was when I was 16 in a pub. And I was very aware of the sexual undertones that kind of came with that. And I just ignored it and laughed it off and thought that it was just that group of guys at that pub and thought it was just pub culture. And I worked in like four different pubs in this time and it, it seemed to be the same everywhere I went, but I just kind of thought, you know, it's just old creepy men in pubs. It's nothing to do with, with men in the real world. Then I stepped out into the real world and I thought, oh no, this happens everywhere. But anyway, but also remember like when I was 20, I was hanging around 20 year old university guys who were renowned for being douchebags 24 seven. So like, I'm not speaking on all, on behalf of all the men of the world. Like, 
I'm just recounting my experiences as it was. You can't argue with that. So I don't want to hear any, you hate all men, you're a misandrist. I don't want to hear it because this is my real experience and I'm not putting it on all men of the world. So don't come for me. Suck my ass. So after reading this feminism book, I became angry. Like I got frustrated. I finally was feeling the injustice and I kind of felt it all at once like something I had never ever felt before I'd never ever given any mind to I had like 20 years of anger just like come out of me and at some point in this journey of anger um I turned on my own father which that was a long time coming um because in my eyes he had left my mum alone right my mum um not that it matters but she is disabled and I think I had some kind of resentment for like added resentment like how could you leave my mom she's perfectly capable my mom is she's amazing but like you left her alone with two young kids and that kind of came out and I was like I was so angry because I'd not dealt with it um plus he was a man so I was like fuck this like and all this stuff was happening in my friend group where the guys were being pigs and then you know I was just seeing everything all at once and I felt like you know it was me versus them um and it makes me kind of sad to look back on this time in my life because where I am now emotionally um I love my dad I am full of empathy for him full of understanding full of time and energy for him I genuinely enjoy being around him and I understand that he has a life that has, has happened before me and is beyond my comprehension and there's he's got reasons and he's a human being do you know what I mean and I don't I don't feel any anger or resentment for him but that's because that process happened that process had to happen someone had to tell me it's okay if you feel angry and then I had to be insufferable for a while and now I'm really happy and it's a process and it's fine and I'm just glad I'm just glad and grateful that I was at uni during this time because no one saw me. No one from my family basically saw me for like an entire year and I just lamented in my room and hated everybody and hated everything and was angry at the world by myself. Which was the best way for me to do that because I really did need to be alone. Honestly, this this time for me was the biggest revelation of my life. I had a shaved head at the time, which I feel like is so stereotypical, but I loved it. Um... And I started dressing so crazy. I had no fucking money, like not a penny to my name. I was scraping by. But somehow I managed to buy, I was so big on charity shopping at the time, and I would buy these scarves and these hats because I didn't really know how to switch it up in terms of t-shirts and trousers because I feel like there's, there's only so much you can do on a budget, but I could buy hats and I could buy scarves and I was obsessed with fingerless gloves. And I would dress so crazy and the crazier I dressed, the better I felt because I felt like I was kind of getting rid of some, some box that I didn't want to fit in anymore and I was taking up the space that I wanted to take up I, I must have invested honestly hundreds into hats and scarves um and when I look back on that time I I'm sometimes filled with the feeling of embarrassment I see it on my snapchat memories you know three four years ago today and it's me in this crazy outfit looking so different than I look now and now I'm definitely more cautious about how I fit into the social norms and it kind of makes me sad but I also think it's kind of part of this life that I'm living now, and that's fine. I know that deep down that little girl in that hat still exists, and she's still rooting for me, so I love that. But I do feel almost a sense of embarrassment when I look back at her, because she had just discovered the word boundaries. I, I learnt the word boundaries from the book on feminism, and I had literally never set a boundary in my life. No one had taught me that word. I had no idea what it meant. And... I was fearful at the time because I'd just gone through quite a traumatic breakup and I never wanted to be hurt again, I never wanted to like know anybody again and then I was suddenly angry at every man in my life and I was like everyone's evil and the world is out to get me and I'm gonna set thousands of boundaries so that no one can ever touch me again and and I held people to such a high standard, I've kind of talked about this before um, but it was good. I needed to be that self-righteous for a while and I went way over the top and then I found a happy medium. Um, I think I have a much better balance now, but all, at the time, all I could focus on was my sense of self. And in the end, it actually kind of led to like a form of emotional burnout, I want to say. Um, I couldn't have existed uh, as that version of myself. For like a long period of time because um 
it was it was so consuming. It was almost all I could do was like exist to 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 think like that. Um, I would say that version of me existed for for about eight months, nine months maybe. And I'm kind of still recovering from the burnout that it gave me, I'll be honest, because after it, I almost went in the other direction and I was like, I never want to think about my feelings again. I never want to think about myself again. I'm so tired. I'm so sick of this. I'm just going to go live my best life. And so I went and I lived my best life. And then what I essentially did, was, so I went from 100 to zero. I went from setting my boundaries super high to like knocking them all down and being like, I'm accepting love again. I'm, I'm letting love back into my life. And then kind of ended up in the same spot where I was not having the best people in my life. So I feel like now I'm like finding my medium again, which is good. I feel like I'm sane for the first time in a really long time. Maybe I, maybe that's the most insane thing I've ever said though. Sometimes when you think that, if that person hadn't existed, if that version of me never existed, I, w I wouldn't be who I am now. So I owe everything to her because the foundations that, that I laid during that time, that time where I was insufferable and too much and, and took up so much space and wore these crazy, crazy clothes, everything sh that I did during that time laid a foundation for who I am now and I live off of those foundations every day. I, I could not exist without her. So I had to kind of minimize her a little bit, put her somewhere smaller within myself to let new versions of me come through, but she's still there. And and whenever I'm around a group of men that, that wouldn't like her, I don't like them either. Maybe I just don't say it to their faces anymore. So yeah, I was angry at my dad. I didn't really have any empathy for him. I was in that they don't serve me, then I get rid of them mindset, uh, which I which was a very TikTok thing. I feel like that really went did the rounds on TikTok. Um, I very rarely think that that's an appropriate way to behave, by the way, unless they are completely draining you and causing you harm and or causing you harm. Um, I don't really think that that's the, the way to go. I mean, I say that as someone with a very small circle. I think small circles are the way to go because when you keep your circles small, you can afford to pour love and energy um, into the people that you love, right? If I had a hundred people around me, I couldn't give them all the time of day. N maybe 10 of them are gonna serve me. Do you know what I mean? And, and yeah, maybe I should cut the rest off. But me sitting here, the people that I value, I have five friends, a mum, a dad, and a sister, and my dog. And I pour my love, I pour my energy into those people um, because I think healing is a communal practice and I really don't like how lost that's got kind of in society lately. Do you know what I mean? Like. When the going gets tough, the tough get going. You have to be there for the people you loved. And that's something that I did not do when I was in my you don't serve me, I cut you off phase. And honestly, that, that phase worked for me for a while because I needed to cut a bunch of shitty people off anyway. But now, no. Like, I remember I had this friend, and I hope they don't mind me saying this, but I'm going to try to be really non-specific. She went through probably the worst series of events a person can go through. Or I witnessed this girl... Her whole life changed, right? I'm not going to give any specifics. And she was extremely hard to be around for an extremely long period of time. Um, and pretty much everybody stopped hanging out with her. No one wanted to be around her. And she lost all her friends. And a lot of it was because she was being shit. Like, she was being a bad person. She was, well, not a bad person, but she was acting like a bad person. She wasn't, I think there's a difference between being and acting. She wasn't being a very easy person to be around. And so everybody just left and people would talk shit about her. And I used to think, how can you talk shit about this person? As if you've experienced one tenth of what she's going through. As if you wouldn't be acting a hundred times worse if you were going through what she's going through. I honestly, I mean, I thought she held it together immaculately. Because if that had been me, I wouldn't have even been around to be a, be a, be a pain in the ass. Do you know what I mean? I would have, I would have... I would have put my hands up in the air, I would have given up. Like, that is the truth of the matter. And I watched her pretty much lose every person close to her and I heard people say some really horrific things about her and it kind of broke my heart because sometimes it is really hard to support people through healing processes because sometimes people aren't even in a place to start or they are starting but there's, it's gonna get worse before it gets better, even though that's part of their healing journey. Um, but I think keep your circles close and you can afford those people the energy when they need it and the love when they need it. And 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 you start to view people as whole people rather than as 
my camera died and honestly I forgot what I was saying. When I was in this really outspoken feminist era that I had, um, which by the way is still very existent, I'm just less outspoken, um, I was living with this guy and I'm going to completely fucking expose him here. He was such a douchebag. So I was living with this guy and I remember talking in the kitchen in our, in our house one night and I said that I'd been in London that day and some with some guys on a construction site had like called out to me as I had walked past and I was just basically saying like it was a it was a passing comment I wasn't even making a point of it I was just saying like you know that annoyed me that was that was something that happened in my day we were talking about our days right we we're making dinner and he was like if you don't want guys to call to you on the street how do you want them to approach you and I was like what just came out your mouth what do you mean what what could you possibly mean by that statement what does that mean good sir and he was like I just don't see the problem with it like if they're not saying anything disrespectful what's the problem and I was like because I'm not a dog like you don't call to me on the fucking street and expect that I'm gonna turn my head and be like so glad that you've just shouted something at me like I'm trying to go about my day um anyway obviously I don't need to explain to anyone here why it's not okay to like shout at women as they walk past I had to explain it to him though and then the the the, the discussion kind of snowballed into a discussion on catcalling and walking home late at night and my other housemate that was a girl was basically saying like yeah like if I'm walking home at night and a guy is walking really close behind me I might cross the street to just get away from him also to like see if he follows me to know if I have a problem or not basically and I obviously backed her up straight away and was like yeah yeah like I'd do that I would do that um like it makes me uncomfortable if if a guy is walking like super close behind me or something or walking behind me for like a very long period of time and he was so offended he was like I don't like to go about my day thinking that a girl might think that I'm a creep like why aren't you giving me the benefit of the doubt and we tried to explain to him like you're not worth the benefit of our doubt we don't know you so why are you taking it personally we're just trying to protect ourselves it's a real issue and he seemed to have no idea that men were had a, a slight history for being violent towards women he seemed to not comprehend it he didn't know he did he didn't think anything we were saying was fair he took everything personal like i don't get it um anyway he was a fucking pig and he used to also leave his pubes on the toilet even as a woman living in one of the most privileged corners of the world i live in the south of england right you would expect to face minimal issues pertaining men of all things in this part of the world i have been stalked by men that I don't know more than once, like turning up at my house kind of stalking, following me late at night kind of stalking, waiting outside my bedroom window at 3 a.m. kind of stalking by men twice. That's abnormal, it has to be. Um, I have been touched in ways I don't want to be touched. I have been grabbed, I have been pushed, I have been pulled, I have been hit, I have been other things that I'm not even going to sit here and fucking talk about because I don't feel comfortable and I live in the south of England. If if I'm facing these things, think of what other women are dealing with and I don't want to see a single comment that says you're bashing all men, not all men are like this, I'm not like this, you have a problem with men. No, I don't. If this doesn't apply to you, it doesn't apply to you and you should be so confident in the fact that it doesn't apply to you that you don't leave a dumb fucking comment. If you leave a comment, it applies to you. If you leave a comment saying shit about how it's not all men or it's nothing to do with you personally, it suddenly has something to do with you personally and I hate you and you stink. So shut up about it. I said, I have male friends, okay? I don't hate men. I love men. I love balls. I think balls are great. There I said it. Do you know what I mean? I think boys can be gentle. I think they're hilarious. But I was, I was raised, and you know what is crazy? Because I was raised in a way that was so female and feminine and loving and embracing and naked. Like, I didn't know a breast was sexual till I was 22. Do you know what I mean? That, I never had a man's view of the world. And do you know what's crazy? Is I still have a man inside my head watching everything I do. And I don't know where he came from because I didn't grow up with a man in my house, but there's somehow a man in my head. Like I was raised by a single mother. I have one sister. I don't have any brothers. I do, my dad was around for my childhood, but I really didn't see very much of him after the age of 10 until I was an adult because we just didn't get on so I just stopped visiting him my mum kind of let me just like not have a relationship with him which was the best thing for me and him at the time because 
we just weren't getting on and I it was having I was having panic attacks when I went to his house because I was uncomfortable there. My sister loved him. Like she got on with him. They understood each other. She would go to his house. Like there was nothing wrong with the relationship. It was just like me and my dad clashed so badly growing up that it was just better that I didn't go. So there was no he wasn't really a presence in my life for quite some time. And my mum's never had a boyfriend. I'd never had a boyfriend until I was in my 20s. My sister didn't get boyfriends coming around the house. Like, there was no men. My mum, being a single mother, had like a community of other women that were around us. And they were all her friends who were all also single mothers. Because I think this is something I've observed through my mum is being for a single mother, their friends who have husbands drift off because they're in their like family unit they're living some of the best days of their lives they don't need friendships they don't need that support system in the same way and so they kind of fall off and they kind of do their own thing whereas the women who are single band together and kind of raise their children more communally so her relationships were almost her friendships were almost solely other single mothers that I observed anyway her close friendships that I was involved with growing up were like other single mothers and just through the luck of the draw most of them had girls daughters and no sons so there were no boys around me growing up and it was blissful like everyone was just naked all the time like it it was very it was just very happy like and and just coincidentally a lot of the friends that I made at school ended up also having single mothers who then my mum was friends with and it was just like honestly they were the golden years but I grew up with such a healthy mindset about women I saw them as the sole providers the sole caregivers the soul of the house the soul of everything strong I thought they knew everything about the world I thought that they could absolutely protect me against anything I thought they knew everything my friends were other girls you know like every need I had was met by women and I just didn't like notice men my teachers weren't male I literally didn't think about boys like they just weren't really in my sphere I had boyfriends like the the little boy that used to live at the bottom of my garden he moved away he was my best friend growing up we used to jump over the hedge and play with each other like he was my best friend but it would never have occurred to me that he was a boy I don't know why it, it actually it, it, it probably did occur to me that he was a boy because I used to clip a hair clip onto um and then I would run around the house saying that I had a penis but anyways we don't need to talk about that raised by women in such a feminine energy encapsulating kind of thing even with that I still have a man in my head watching me you know when you're making a cup of tea late at night and you straighten your back to look a bit sexier that's the male gaze like what? how is it in my head it's crazy how strong influences are even when they're not in your home even when they're just an outside influence how much they can get to you anyway um I feel like there's just a lot to dismantle like womanhood I lo I, I remember I was I was on a date with this guy once and he asked me if I would rather be a billionaire man or a woman and I said a woman um I can't remember why we were talking about it or what got us onto the subject but he was so shocked like he could not comprehend why I would have said that and it's because like I say this bear in mind as a woman who lives in the south of England I'm very lucky I have rights to my body I have rights equal to a man and other than 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 attitude problems and safety issues and things like that I'm very very lucky in my status as a woman um that that's not lost on me but the, which allows me to appreciate what I'm about to say whereas other women in other corners of the world might not be able to appreciate this so let's just keep them in mind and let's not you know rejoice too much but the reason I said I would rather be a poor woman than a rich man is because and this is something he couldn't understand because he'll never have experienced it but the energy in a room when it's just women is divine and like when a woman feels safe and you're in the room with her as another woman that is something that just exists very purely between you two and it doesn't it's not to say that she can't feel safe also with just a man in the room she absolutely can but i feel like there's just this underlying level of understanding and and trust between women even women like you watch like like old documentaries or old films based in like 
even just as far back as like the 50s, right? And you watch them and you see these women who are in non-ideal situations um, being in a room all together and there is still just this like layer of knowing and understanding and safety and like this different energy. And that is just something I could never ever trade for being a rich man. I don't know, I could, I could never. I love being a woman. I love being able to be a woman in a room full of women. That is what I fucking love. And I would not give that up for literally any amount of money. Being a woman is my favorite thing about me, even though I have no idea what it is about me that makes me a woman. I'm gonna shut the fuck up and go home. Thanks for watching. Love you so much. And I will see you next week, next Sunday. I'm gonna upload every Sunday at around 2 p.m. from now on. Okay, that's everything from me. I have really bad indigestion. Love you so much. Bye.